Hello relatives, welcome to this week's Schlagbeit for the week May 18th, 2009 from sunny Arizona. 11 straight days of over 100 degrees, summer is already here. This week's Schlagbeit entitled Living in a Lung. A couple of weeks ago I read an obituary in the New York Times about Martha Mason who died in her home in Lattimore, North Carolina. She was 71 years old. For more than 60 years, Martha lived in an iron lung. Nobody has ever lived in one longer. I was moved by her story. When she was 11 years old, she went to bed one night feeling achy. She didn't tell her parents about it because they had just buried her 13-year-old brother who had died of polio only days before. Martha spent the next year in a hospital and went home in an iron lung. Lattimore, North Carolina may have been the only situation in which she could have thrived so well. Being encased in a seven foot long, 800 pound iron cylinder made it hard to move around easily. So in a town of 400 people, Martha didn't have to go to town. The town came to her. In Lattimore, everybody was a neighbor or a neighbor's neighbor. The teachers came, the family doctor visited regularly, and so did members of the fire department who came by during terrible weather and power failures to make sure that her backup generator was working. Martha Mason graduated number one from her high school and university. And when she returned home, she began writing for the local newspaper. 50 years later, with the aid of a voice activated computer, she wrote a book, Breath, in her hometown, high school graduates would stop by before the ceremony so that Martha could admire them in their caps and gowns. Newly married couples came by in their wedding finery and town celebrations always included her. She was an associate professor of communications at Wake Forest and had friends all over the world. Her iron lung was adorned with magnets from all of their hometowns. Martha often gave dinner parties where she ate lying down with her guests around the dinner table, pushed up beside the table, her iron lung bedecked with magnets. It looked like a steamer trunk, she said. Martha said she survived because she was endlessly curious and there was so much to learn. She chose to remain in an iron lung because of the freedom that it gave her. She didn't want to try one of those newer, portable, smaller ventilators because of the tubes in her throat that it might require. And also her iron lung didn't require professional training to operate so that she could live in her house in her hometown where she knew that she could be independent. I'm thinking that in an age where freedom is generally measured by how far we can go and how fast we can get there, Martha Mason told us that she was free in an iron lung. She said, I'm happy with who I am and where I am. And I wouldn't have chosen this life, certainly. But given this life, I probably had the best situation anybody could ask for. A fine and full life. To live a life of radical self-acceptance to come to every day with the joyful anticipation of learning something new. Martha Mason epitomizes the person that I want to be. Have a wonderful week. Remember, we're all connected. Nobody makes it alone. Remember your relatives. I say this for all my relations. Mitakuyasi.